Dr. Riyad Al Musa, CEO of uh, CEO of Innovatech. Uh, Innovatech is a company who we're very proud of, an Omani company who has grown from Oman, operating internationally. Uh, it's a great example for other companies, other organizations to follow. So please, Dr. Riyad Al Musa, make your way uh, onto the stage. I'd like to call up our second panelist, Engineer Maqbool Al Wahabi, CEO of Aman Data Park. <laughs> Engineer Maqbool Al Wahabi, please make your way to the stage. Our next panelist, Engineer Abdul Hakim Al Musalhi, CEO of Data Mount. Abdul Aziz Jafar, CEO of Etco. Asad Al Saadi, Acting CEO of Data to Cloud. Engineer Hafiz Farooq, Global Cyber Security Architect, Saudi Aramco. <laughs> Mohammed Al Tamami, GM, IMT, Galfar, and co founder and CEO, a COO of Mamoun Financial Technologies. I would now like to, pa to pass it over to the chairman. Assalamu alaikum, everybody, and a very good morning to you all. Hope. Uh, you're going to have a very interesting uh, event today and tomorrow uh, and on the third day. Uh, data clearly is the fuel, the bloodstream, the dollars of the future coming in. So I think uh, this discussion is very timely. Um, Shukran. Um, I think one of the things to realize um, there is a gentleman called Edward Deming, who in the 50s uh, kind of was the creator of uh, what is not now known as lean. And one of the words that he, or the expressions he came up with is that without data, you're just another guy with an opinion or another person with an opinion. I would like to say that things have moved on though, is that today it's not about the availability of data. We actually, live in a sea of data. It's an ocean of data where, you know, we actually, the issue currently is not without data, you have data. It's about how do you extract real insight, real value from that data. Now, in Innovatech and with the help of PDO, with the creation of Nebras, one of the key things that we found is the if you look at what is the most, let's say, data-driven organization in the universe, can someone, let's make this a bit interactive, can someone think of what is actually, if you talk about data decision, data-driven decision making, who is making the best data-driven decision um, in any organization? Absolutely, someone said it. It's the human being. We are talking about billions of neurons that exist, yet when your finger requires attention because you clicked it against a table, it's instantaneous that you need it there. Now, that is about insight. And so the big data, the topic of, of this conference is about big data. It's about making all of that data available and accessible. And I guess the panel discussion today will talk a little bit about that. But the other part is about how do you then extract the value and the insight of that data and present it in the right way in an organization to the right person so that that decision can be made in the best possible way to maximize value. So, with that, I would like to uh, start with our panel today, or this morning, I should say, that really talks a little bit more about the data part of things and the big data and making that data available. And the debate that is happening right now in most organizations, which is, do I stick with my infrastructure that I have and the servers that I have today and all the perceived advantages of having that? versus going to something like a data park and having that data available on the cloud and what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing that. So in that, um, I would like to, uh, you know, and I'll, I'm gonna start with the panel and 
I think one, one of the things that I really like today is that the panel is really, if you think about it, is distributed almost like providers and customers. So having that, we'll, we'll try to make it a bit like a battle so that it's fun, right? So uh, is between what the providers provide and what do the uh, customers really want and what they need and some of the challenges that they're facing and how to go about it. But I will, I'm, I'm gonna sit down in a minute and I'll start with my first question to the panel and I think it'll go mostly to the data center providers. And let's start with some definitions because sometimes even that is a little bit confusing. So we talk about data centers, we talk about cloud, we talk about hybrids, we talk about, you know, what are we really talking about? So I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on to, uh, I think particularly the, our first, uh, you know, from the data centers, is that what is it in your mind? What is data centers? That's uh, the question. So, so how are data centers, you know, uh, what are they? And how are they versus the cloud? Versus and, cloud, and yeah. What are hybrids? Basically, uh, we'll try to make it as easy as possible, away from technology and technicality uh, of it. Uh, by, I, I see it, you know, it's like Google. Uh, Google would not have been Google if the strategy was to have uh, a localized servers. Google have empowered itself and empowered the nations and empowered the globe just by moving into cloud. Google is nothing but a bunch of cloud servers ac uh, having accessibility by the whole globe, whoever has internet access, in order to uh, basically pull and push data, I would say. Uh, you know, you can also, also participate in pushing data and enriching Google databases. Again, here, if you think about it from uh, a government perspective or a country-wide perspective, it's the same. If everybody going to have his servers in his prem, that's good. There's no, it's nothing bad about that. But guess what? You are losing an opportunity. You're losing an opportunity of sharing data you are losing an opportunity of actually maximizing the value of searching for data because it would not make any sense to have your own Google in your data center. Number three, you will be missing an opportunity in what we, what we call uh, the, the economy of scale. There's a huge economy of scale where you don't have to pay anything or you pay minimum for an investment over a total cost of ownership of, like say, a couple of years, five, ten years. Again, with Google, just, just, if you can see the value of Google today, you can search for anything, you know, literally anything. You can search for my uh, profile if you want. If nobody knows me, you can just Google and you, you know, somehow you're gonna get some حتى يمكن شهادة الزواج موجودة جوجل ما 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 استبعد يعني I I don't think so I I haven't posted anything on that side بس يعني ما 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 تستبعد واحد من هناك سواء في ما أعرف إيش في سوشيال ميديا it is all connected the value of Google بس guess what there is nothing you pay you don't pay anything and that is the economy of scale part so in Google it is you don't pay anything but in our in the service providers we they pay I so said they pay minimum. I mean, I don't think our services are that expensive compared to on-prem. Uh, today we are talking about sharing data, open data. Those cannot be achieved with an on-prem strategy. When we say on-prem, we mean data centers, localized data centers. Can, they can only be achieved if you have cloud. It's as simple as that. Maybe you can, Abdel Hakim, yeah. make it more simple. Yes, and, and Abdel Hakim, maybe one of the things that you can also allude to is that from a requirement point of view, in your perspective, um, in terms of the offering, how does this differ then in terms of value from, let's say, a large organization like your PDOs and the Oman Tills, and maybe the smaller organizations uh, and the medium-sized organizations. So if you could shed some light on that, that would be great. Yeah, I think I will go a little bit technically on the side now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so before we start this, let me explain what is the data center actually. The perception that we have seen in the last, let's say, 10 years, 
The data center is a server room where there is a rack, a cabinet, and there is electrical power on it, and we connect it to, to the internet with our own infrastructure. The data center is totally different. Data center is a very complicated, and I'm talking about a building with a very complicated uh, element and infrastructure inside it. It contains about electrical, uh, cooling, uh, let's say the trays, the internet. It is a very complicated infrastructure which interact, the element interact with each other. If you go to the bigger side, if you need to build really a proper data center, you need to have you know, uh, a data center with uh, a proper cooling and a high efficiency in terms of the power itself. When you go inside the data center, there is an infrastructure side. When you build, when you build the data center, you build to provide a co-location. Co-location, it means a simple rack. It's not a simple rack in, in, in a real data center with a proper uh, cooling and electrical mechanism there then you can provide the infrastructure. To go back to your question, uh, in terms you know, how we compare or how we can provide as a service provider, compare it to the large and a small and medium organization. Let's go for the large organization. Large organization, normally we consider it between 10, you know, maximum to 20 racks, what they require. When I say racks, deployed with the infrastructure, deployed with a platform, deployed with the software. So the issues of on-prem comparing to the service provider, we have a bigger capacity in terms of the number of rack, scalability. So if they require to uh, expand, they will have a difficulty to expand to the building. If they would like to scale down, again, they already invest, so there is no way to scale down. But in our, uh, in our business of if outsourcing to the data center, you can scale up or you can scale down as well. So this is an option is over to the, uh, to the service provider. Um, again, you know, uh, those uh, large organizations, sometimes they ask about the privacy. We are talking about 10 to 20 rack. You can give them the privacy that they want. The privacy, you know, in terms of providing a cache to them, it will be a data center inside the data center. So they have what they require in terms of the privacy. Security, you know, they can take the logs of the camera, they can take the logs of you know, the access control. So there is no, you know, a big, uh, I mean, if you compare it between on-prem and on the service uh, provider, there is no, you know, a big difference in terms of the security, uh, security part. Because you can put your security uh, policy or whatever you have and match it with the security policy that you require it from the service provider. Um, maybe this is yeah. uh, to so, answer. So, and yeah, Abdul Hakim, you touched on a lot of points, uh, whether it is about security or about costs, which, uh, you know, later down the line, I would like to get into a little bit more. Mm. But um, I think one of the things that we would also like to do, and I think the team has set that up, is let's try to understand a little bit what is the current state. When we talk about utilization of data centers, um, let's, I think the team has conducted a poll. Uh, Sadiq, are we ready to uh, look at the poll? So th th there's a question that has been raised and it says, okay, great, we have now three, at least three data center providers. What is it that, how are we using them? Uh, in Oman at the very least, are they being utilized? What are they being utilized for? And, and you know, just to understand where we stand currently. So. Is, is this already something set up or needs to be set up? Okay, so, so uh, people, this is available in Zoom. So for the people who are participating on the call from a Zoom, uh, from a Zoom call perspective, please have a look at the question, which is are you using uh, data centers or are you, uh, you know, and I think the answers are coming through. Now, uh, you know, I, I don't want to leave the, the audience that are sitting in the room aside. So I'm going to ask the same question, and, and obviously we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way by raising hands. So if we ask the same question again, um, you know, are you, how are you d housing your data? Is it in an in-house server? Is it a data center? Or is it a hybrid between the two? So let me ask the people who are in the audience, uh, who of you are using data centers in your organizations to house your data? Can I ask you to please raise your hands? So I think I'm seeing three hands, uh, four hands, okay. Um, and can I ask 
who is not using data centers and using them more in-house uh, in terms of servers. So we have, okay, I think the, the rest of the people pr seem to be having it in their heads. So that's <laughs> a, a different, you know. But we have about four people on the other. And if I ask hybrid, how many people are using hybrids? So that's uh, about five people. So it, it's actually interesting that it's almost equally distributed. If we look at the polls, on the other hand, on the Zoom call, and we have obviously a larger participation. Uh, well, actually, no, it, it is, you know, but it is more in-house um, and then uh, less in data centers and even less from a hybrid point of view. That's so that's good. Which is yeah, good. That's a business opportunity, there exactly. Is still <laughs> it's a gap, I think, in the, you know. So, so, so maybe <laughs> let, let me ask uh, Asad uh, as the other, uh, you know, the third data uh, center provider is what has your experience been in terms of, you know, utilization of data centers? How is it in Oman? How much you know, in terms of your market share, how much of your market share is actually coming to the data centers and how much are still in in-house? And also, how does that vary compared to the rest of the world? Are we, you know, are we in, in sync? Are we behind? Are we ahead? I would be grateful if you can share some light on that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Riyad. Uh, well, uh, I believe uh, when it comes to the market share and uh, how much we are having out of the market, um, Still, the numbers are not obvious to us, but I believe this, the, the pool that conducted here is giving the right picture. A majority of uh, the customer here is in Oman. They are either prefer to go on-prem uh, for data warehouse investment or hybrid once they get convinced. And this is raising a lot of concern from their side. They are always uh, having the point of uh, the privacy of data that they have it, the security part, and the calculation of investment that they are doing when they are building their uh, on-prem uh, data warehouse. Uh, my view on that part, uh, actually, there is a kind of misunderstanding in a way how uh, the, the data center is, uh, or the concept of having a data center or getting uh, the service from a cloud service provider or having a co-location service from the uh, provider itself instead of having it uh, on-prem. Uh, when it comes to the cost, Normally, uh, they are not considering exactly the amount of investment that done at the first stage. And the other part of that, uh, majority of the companies there or organization, including the government side as well, they are having uh, already that investment since uh, a while. So they are trying to avoid shifting from having it from on-prem. But uh, the counterpart on this, uh, they need to take into consideration the long-term view of uh, uh, the government and the initiatives of 2040 and digital transformation, which is the main driver uh, nowadays. Uh, in order to achieve that, I believe uh, the cloud service provider and data center provider will get to play a major role on this, uh, which is obvious to the main stoke stakeholders. Uh, having everything centralized and having the proper accessibility by the end user and the organization itself can't be achieved if uh, the organization are still believing on investing on-prem. They have to have it uh, shared on a cloud so everybody can access it, which is the point that Dr. Uh, uh, Salem Murzaki just a point on that, open data. This is cannot be achieved unless you are hosting your service on cloud. Uh, when it comes to the security and uh, accessibility of the data, I believe uh, Today, the companies uh, are uh, accredited by uh, Ministry uh, MTCIT, and they have conducted a lot of uh, uh, criteria to make sure that they are meeting the standard required moving forward. Uh, we are on uh, D2C, uh, Data to Cloud. Uh, we have actually taken into consideration all uh, factors to make sure that our data center is uh, out of uh, work, actually, and uh, we are trying to implement, and actually we already implemented, uh, the, the, the main uh, expertise on developing the data center to make sure that we are providing a high standard service to the customer. Yet, uh, it is again going back to the same. Uh, the awareness uh, 
in market in Omani market still it's not reaching the level. So when you are saying that how we are compared to other uh, countries, uh, I believe we are still behind. Uh, but on the other hand, I believe the government is is is, is actually investing a lot to make sure that we are growing, we are uh, reaching the. Sta uh, uh, the standards that required, and we are moving forward toward reaching the objective by uh, 2025. Um, that day, we had uh, a kind of conference with uh, MTCIT led by uh, Dr. Ali Shedani, uh, talking about digital transformation. And uh, the aim is clear to everybody. The objective by end of this initiative is clear. Uh, I believe uh, it, is a, it is something achievable. Uh, but again, uh, involvement from both private and public sector is required to make sure that we are reaching that level. Thank you for that. Um, so I, I think we've heard a little bit now from the data center providers. Uh, it's almost like a pitch. I guess that's the, the, the way we're going about it. But the customers seem, don't seem to be biting. So let's talk a little bit to the customers. Um, and I would like to start actually with my old friend Mohammed Tamami because he's actually, uh, it's interesting because he double hats and actually triple hats in this panel, right? So he's uh, involved at it from an organizational point of view, a large organization point of view, but also as the CEO of a, uh, a startup. And he's used services and data center services both in Oman and internationally. So uh, my question to you as the co-founder of Amun, can you give us some insights on how the banking sector and the fintech sector is actually using uh, cloud services and data center services? And also, um, how are they supporting you in terms of achieving what you want to achieve or not? And what are, kind of what are the gaps that you're seeing in, in being able to do what you need to do? Thank you, Dr. Riyadh, and uh, thank all of you for being here, and I'm happy to be here with you all. Um, I think uh, off the bat, I'd like to ask the service provider, what's up with your prices, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've all listened to your brochure for a few minutes, but what's up with that? Uh, I, I want to I talk about large, large corporations for a minute, right? Um, the data, um, data center providers are extremely useful, right? Because nobody does security better than them. Uh, nobody has the advanced infrastructure that they do uh, compared to large corporations. But it's also important to recognize some large corporations in Oman have invested significantly over the last 20 years in their own infrastructure, the very infrastructure that they want us to give up for their services. Uh, and a lot of large corporations have done this way before any of these service providers even existed. And I think that's important to recognize uh, in this conversation. Uh, as we try to reorient ourselves into the new uh, infrastructure that's out there for us. Uh, I, and I will, I will particularly reflect uh, on uh, uh, Cyclone Shaheen. Uh, I, I remember that weekend having not been able to sleep because I wasn't thinking about my home, but rather I was thinking about my infrastructure. Now, we took the appropriate measures, but I remember thinking to myself, Wow, that amount must be a really nice address right up there in the mountain, right? Um, and then when you look at the flip side of large corporations that have made significant investment, uh, service providers are not necessarily bridging that gap into moving us there. And that's why I came off the bat on prices, right? Because uh, for large corporations, we compare uh, other providers out there. And often we have seen misrepresentation of, uh, of uh, the law and the standards uh, relative to adopting uh, prices uh, or uh, service providers locally. And this is something I really hope the service providers would take up uh, down the road. Now to come to your question, Dr. Riyad, on uh, the banking industry. I think the banking industry uh, is a great conduit for us to understand uh, infrastructure. But the banking sector has always invested significantly in its infrastructure. Uh, now, let's, uh, let's not get into whether these are legacy systems or not, but uh, they are a good representation of a highly well-educated large corporation in Oman when it comes to the standards uh, of their infrastructure. And fintech is a bit very uh, financial technologies or banking is a bit different from uh, your standard uh, corporation. 
and I'm glad to see that uh, the ministry is putting a lot of effort in uh, compliance, standardization, uh, and a lot of the efforts that were mentioned earlier today. Um, so it is still a burgoing space, and there is much that uh, can be done, and I see a huge role by the service providers down the road. So thank, thanks for that, Mohammed. I think maybe to highlight some of the points that you've mentioned. So yeah. I think one point you mentioned is that the infrastructure that have already been invested in by corporations, and I think that probably applies obviously to the banking sector, but it also applies to large organizations like the one you currently are also associated with mm -hmm. in Galfar, mm -hmm. to the oil and gas companies, to the telecom companies, I think. So that's one thing. And then, so that's in a sense the investment that the companies have already made. I think the value then uh, is in terms of moving compared to the pricing that is there is one of the challenges that I think you are highlighting. Uh, maybe the other one that you've kind of alluded to, and I'll then um, may, maybe in the sense of uh, asking half of from um, particularly the oil and gas sector to be talking about that a little bit more, and that is uh, the security aspect. Uh, so uh, I think a number of people have already mentioned that, and, and Hamid, to some degree, you've mentioned that as well. But I think particularly when we talk about large national oil companies where the GDP of the country depends primarily on these organizations. Obviously, they have the same challenge of have already invested into these systems, but also their data to them is sacred. It is the national data, it is, you know. And so from, a, I, I remember being involved in a, uh, you know, a, a conference uh, not too unsimilar to this uh, several years ago where you know, the, the, the national oil companies are saying, this is our bread and butter, this is our data, we're not giving it up for anything, not anywhere. But I think things have moved on. Uh, and so, half of what I would really like to ask you is that from the oil and gas perspective, and particularly large national oil companies' perspective, what are your views in terms of, you know, from a security point of view, what are the challenges in terms of handing you know, moving over, does actually data centers and cloud provide potentially more security than what infrastructure, in-house infrastructure structure provides? And what are the current challenges that are still remaining that in your mind, you know, are not being addressed uh, by the data center providers? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me on behalf of Saudi Ramco. So thank you very much, doctor, uh, for asking such a nice question. Uh, I would say that security is, is a major concern for any uh, national asset you have, whether it is oil company or any other national asset. So moving to a cloud is, is a big change in mindset, especially when we talk about oil companies, and Saudi Ramco is not one of the company who is uh, thinking on the same lines. Uh, but eventually, once you stay away from the cloud, you are actually away from lots of features. Uh, it's not only uh, the comprehensive platform you have, it's the amount of features you are going to get from the clouds. People can uh, deploy the applications quickly, they can access it from anywhere, uh, they can probably uh, work more efficiently. So that is why uh, this mindset, uh, even in Aramco or any other oil company, uh, it was uh, difficult to implement, but now people are gradually moving towards this direction, and uh, I think the cloud is coming everywhere, including my company as well. Uh, but there is one more option available uh, that you can uh, build your own uh, private cloud. This is one of the options available as well. If, if you have a bigger company like uh, Aramco or a PDO, you can invest your own infrastructure. Uh, you can tell Omantel to uh, provide you a nice network backbone. Uh, if you can build your own data center, and if you have the capability to build your own uh, uh, private cloud infrastructure, you can do it. You know? So this is one of the options, I believe, most of the oil companies can look for. So this one is obviously available. When we move towards the public cloud, uh, yes, you're right, security is a major concern, but this is not something which you cannot uh, you know, address. Uh, there are lots of ways. Uh, I know the number of threats on the clouds are increasing, especially after the ransomware attack. Um, uh, one major attack on your company and all your assets are gone. So you need to be pretty careful when you go, go to the cloud. Uh, you need to make sure that all your security controls are there. 
when you talk about authentication, authentication is good, identity federation, SAML, all LDAP, everything is nicely deployed. When we talk about data, it should be encrypted on the cloud. When we talk about um, uh, the two-factor authentication, it should be there. So uh, you, you have to enable auditing, you know, accounting, all these uh, security controls should be built around your application which are going to be moved on the, on the cloud itself. So once you uh, have all these security controls, I think uh, your companies can actually take a step forward and uh, actually move towards the cloud. Uh, it's not something impossible. Uh, one more thing I want to highlight here is the use of uh, data science uh, because uh, when you move your critical applications on, uh, on a cloud environment, uh, your application are going to generate huge amount of security data. Because if you have an application on in-house servers, probably you have three, four servers, maybe one database server, few application servers, and Active Directory maybe, and that's it. But once you move your infrastructure on a cloud, then the cloud can components are much more than uh, your in-house servers, you know. Uh, they all will generate a massive amount of log, APA logs and all this uh, accounting stuff. So now you need to use the data science you need to run the algorithms on top of this security data so that you can detect some nice uh, anomalies. Uh, you can do some nice threat hunting on your security data. So that is why I'm saying that once you move to the, towards the cloud, your security arsenal should be completely ready. And if you are not well prepared, obviously, you know, uh, it's your national asset, you will have to make sure that you uh, uh, secure your infrastructure before, before you actually move your application to the cloud itself. I hope and, uh, I yes. answered your question. Thanks so much. And, yeah, and no so, so I think if I'm hearing the customers, they're kind of saying, you know, we like what we see, but the value is still, you know, not fully there. And from a security point of view, they are kind of saying, okay, we could lean towards the centralized data and so on and so forth in your cloud. But on the other hand, what we're more comfortable right now with is our own cloud, so which, which kind of says that there is still a gap, and, and it's a gap that I would like to discuss coming forward, but before we do that, I would like to add the third element that Halfa brought in, and that is about services, and particularly the advanced analytics and areas along these lines. And at this point, I'd like to bring in Abdul Aziz uh, to talk a little bit more from, because your company provides these artificial intelligence and, and uh, advanced analytical services. And essentially, you're another type of customer to these data centers, not from a, maybe a data provision point of view, but more from a analyzing the data and bringing in the analytics part from the, uh, you know. So as a, as a user or as a, let's say, as a customer, from that perspective, what is it that your take on what data centers and data center providers currently provide and where do you see that you know more needs to be done, or uh, things are going great already? Thank you, Dr. Riyadh. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and uh, thank you for uh, the very interesting question. And uh, I won't take too long since I'm very close to the break. Uh, generally speaking, we work in a um, very close um, type of analytics um, with regards to a niche. Uh, domain, which is geospace analytics. So it requires a lot of rendering, it requires a lot of uh, processing power. Now, uh, looking at it from a point of view where it is very important to us is the TCO, the total cost of ownership. If you, look, if you recalculate the total cost of ownership in, in, in the requirements that we need with regards to processing power, with regards to latency, with regards to uh, IO speed, with regards to even connectivity to external components around the world to uh, do this kind of analytics, then your best solution is actually going into uh, cloud. There where you, is the only place where you can find scalability, quick scalability, not just scalability. Anybody can scale up, scale down. But then quick scalability, that's the only way we can do that. You can also scale up and scale down not only your processing power, also your connectivity and uh, uh, your requirement from storage and so on and so forth. So in, in that point of view, the best way to move on is, is through the cloud. 
Uh, in addition to that, because we have uh, other domains, one of our main domains is uh, the natural language processing as well. That requires a lot of uh, interactivity with quite a lot of uh, organizations also um, across the Asia. And uh, also the gateway outside, the connectivity itself, the best way to go is either, well, there are two ways only. Either you have your own connectivity or you, have, you go through the uh, data center. So if you look at it from a total cost of ownership, again, going through the, the cloud, having it all end-to-end -end, uh, provided, and focusing on your actual core business rather than focusing on the uh, other uh, te technical parts of it. I've sat on both uh, sides of the uh, table from a technical point of view and from a uh, business point of view. And uh, it, it is difficult from a technical point of view to have something in-house unless, um, as uh, our colleague said, unless you have a lot of money in the oil, oil field, so you can spend more uh, and have a full-fledged team to be dedicated for that uh, domain. So uh, this is my take on that. Uh, Great, great thank, thank you so much, Abdelaziz. So I, I go now back to Maqbul and Abdel Hakim and Asad in terms of going back, to having heard, and if I can maybe summarize it in two or three points, that seems to be the case. So I think everybody seems to be convinced that going to the cloud long term is a must from a uh, kind of just a, what we could do with our data. And also even it seems that from a you know, total cost of ownership point of view, it makes sense to be moving there. But there does seem to be some barriers. And the barriers that I, if I am understanding, uh, you know, the input is probably in two or three areas. The first part is on the security part, there still is a little bit of concern. And as a result, we are, you know, companies like Aramco and I think PDO is the same way. And I'm sure a lot of the other companies are saying, okay, it's too big a jump. Let's go with localized clouds to begin with and in-house clouds and so on and so forth. So maybe let's take these topics one by one. One has to do then with the security side and, and what would your take be or maybe uh, how that either understanding or solution going forward be uh, bridged. Then the next topic we'll be talking about is cost. So leave your point on cost, we'll, we'll come back to that. And, and really value versus cost, we'll, we'll come back to that later. And maybe there are one or other two points. But let's first start with the security side of things. Um, and who would like to take that on? Uh, uh, you know, from whether Asad there or Hakim, go ahead. Hakim, let's talk about cost. Let's talk about security. <laughs> a healthy competition is always a good thing for the user, right? <laughs> uh, because we have faced, you know, a couple of uh, customer or a couple of clients, which again they have the main concern is the security part of it. Uh, we we need to sit with the customer, we need to sit with the client, understand what kind of concern they have. So let me summarize it in a couple of points. Let me say a bigger organization which they're uh, stating in their security policy, it have to be not shared, it have to be dedicated for that organization. So we came up with a couple of, uh, you know, solution to them. Uh, first of all, we need, you know, to match their security policy with service provider or with us as a data mount or uh, ODB security policy. If it is matched, they can jump into the next step. If not, let's see what kind of enhancement it requires from both sides. Second, we need, uh, they need to understand or they need to make sure that implementation on place. Unfortunately, we have seen a couple of security policy or other policy, it is there in the organization, but is it implemented, is it controlled? Not. So this is a big issue actually. Forget about you know, firewall, WAF, uh, camera, those are it will come second, those are the tools. But security policy, it comes the first when you when you consider any, uh, uh, any uh, project implementation. Second part of it, uh, we give them uh, many solutions. One of them is dedicated infrastructure, or what we called it, a private cloud. And uh, based on private cloud, actually, we provide them dedicated infrastructure. But again, they will miss the advantage of the cloud, which is scale up and scale down. So again, we 
we have another solution for that one. We will give them what they require from the beginning. I mean, the first year, you know, for any digital transformation, let's say, uh, in a simple way, if there is a new digital transformation project, a new ARB application. So we start with them on the testing phase, development phase. We provide the infrastructure dedicated to them, you know, according to that need, you know, for the six months or one year. Then they will expand. They said we will go live in 2022 or 2023. So we'll expand the infrastructure. So now they will get the benefit of cloud, which is the most benefit is scale up and the total cost of ownership. Otherwise, it will be a normal infrastructure as a service providing to them. They will get half of the advantage of the cloud. So uh, again, in terms of the security, they need to have a dedicated infrastructure. They need to have dedicated rack space or cabinet for them. They have to have the access to that rack. They need to have an access to that infrastructure. Not, even the, not only the access, even the locks. Locks of the camera, locks of the, of the rack locks of the infrastructure, we can provide everything you know, to the customer actually. And I think all of them, they can, uh, all of us, we can provide the same. So we cover the security part of it. Um, if they need to go to the extra mileage of the security, like they need a dedicated team to be inside the data center or to have a dedicated team and the NOC inside the data center, also we can provide it. You know, it depends on the project and the size of the project. Um, I will go back to just yes. one answer to, in terms yes. of the cost. Uh, he said we are really expensive, uh, and all of us. It's an economic, you know, this business, it, it, it's a value business. So when we grow, we can reduce our price in terms of a small project. Uh, in terms of, you know, SME's company, we receive a lot of complaint from their side that our price comparing to the Google or comparing to the other international uh, service provider, we are higher than them by 20 to 30%. But right now, I mean, we are working in reduction of the price in terms of the telecom, you know, the most element maybe it will be the telecom as a pr uh, telecom price is really, uh, the bandwidth is really high. Um, the sizing of, you know, uh, of our infrastructure is, st is still between small and medium, does not reach large because we are only concentrating in the local market. We are still not expanding to the international market. When we expand and the number of customers increase, of course, that one is supposed to be reflected to the price uh, uh, to the end customer. Tamam, shukran, Abdul Hakim. I, I really appreciate your input. But I, I think you're also bringing up another point in terms of which I would like to discuss a little bit further down the line. Uh, and that is to do with, are we really setting up our data centers from a policy point of view, from the business models point of view, from a regulation point of view, from a pricing point of view, for you guys to compete? Because I think this is then what it also comes back to the government and some of the initiatives that, you know, that needs to. So w w let's come back to that a bit later. But one thing I do want to mention, because I honestly still see a gap. And the gap to me is that when you, do, when you go through a transformation, because this is a transformation, you're asking companies that have lived this way for decades to come and change. Now, change only happens in hearts and minds. And I think the minds are there, but the hearts are still not there. This reminds me, and, and please allow me to digress a little bit. When, you know, one person that was very dear to my heart was my late grandmother. She raised me as much as my mother and father did. But I remember when it came to money, she never put her money in the bank. It was always under the pillow somewhere, or actually, I'll tell you what it, where it was. It was actually in a needle box, in, in the cabinet, in the cupboards, where no one knew which needle box it is, but she definitely knew. Now, I spoke to her like, you know, so many times about putting her money in the bank. She said, yeah, it makes sense and all that, but I'm not gonna do that. We then had a flood, if you remember in the 80s actually, or was it the 90s, I can't remember now, where her house in Matrah almost got flooded and that needle box almost got underwater. That's when she then said, okay, I, can, I now need to put it in the bank. So I, I think what you guys are saying, the guys are starting to get it and they are, in their mind, they are moving there, but their hearts are not still in it. And I think this becomes a, something that the providers in their messaging needs to address so that that heart issue is alleviated so that they go through it. With that, 
let's move maybe to the other topic, and I will allow both uh, Asad and uh, Maqbul to come back, maybe both on the security part, but also let's talk a little bit about the cost part. Because the cost part is, seems to be a barrier, because you do have a competition. The world is now an open oyster, and people can go to other providers internationally, and they seem to find, at least from a cost perspective, that they are, you know, the others are more competitive. So, can we come into that a little bit? Uh, there's two points. I'll, I'll, I'll try not to take too much of the time. I know the panelists also would like to emphasize on their points. The first point is about the pricing and pricing aspect. Uh, first of all, it's not expensive. And I hear, I hear the, the comments and maybe it's going to be great if we can challenge uh, after, you know, afterwards and, and uh, see that concern. Cloud is never expensive. Cloud has the greatest economy of scale. When we go back in the 90s, semiconductors have made arithmetic cheaper and cheaper. Before semiconductors, we used to do arithmetics using some traditional means. You know, so, uh, doing all that calculation in a balance sheet, our grandfathers and fathers did not have uh, computers at that time. And they used to do a PNL of their own shops. But guess what? That's those PNL creations, used to take tremendous amount of time. Those semiconductors came, computers came with them. You can create your Excel sheet in no time and you create your PNL and, and, and sheets in no time. So after that came uh, what we call uh, cloud. Cloud have managed to actually reduce a lot of cost uh, compared to on-prem. You don't have CapEx huge capex, you don't have uh, to maintain all those servers and you don't have to have a team around maintaining all those servers. You remember electricity on the olden days? Electricity were not available, so every house or every two or three house has to have a generator in the, 19, in the 18th century. But then there are some smart guys came with the uh, uh, centralized electricity. So you take electricity as a service and you pay per utilization, which means you, ha you, you are paying less because you don't have to buy a generator, you don't have to maintain a generator, and you don't have to have a team around the generator in order to make sure it is well maintained. Just imagine the cost. But you're now having to convince someone who already has a generator to switch to your network. Exactly. Right? And that is where we find a challenge, to be honest with you. And we have solutions for that. We can do a takeover. We can actually help you in order to take it and sell it and commercialize it. We can even, I remember we had a deal similar to this, where we had to, the, the, the client had servers and storage. And they just didn't want to let go. I mean, what, what would I do with this investment? We took over the investment. We bought it from him. Because we as a data center providers, we need servers, we need storage. So if you have servers and storage devices and network elements, please let us know. We would like to buy it from you. Excellent. And that, that, that's, that will make our life easier. Now in the security part, uh, two years, I think, two or three years back, CIA, and this is all public, by the way, you can Google it. I'm not saying anything confidential here. The CIA have, have signed with Amazon to cloudify some workloads. Not all, but some workloads. A couple of months ago, even the, uh, the national security of uh, the United Kingdom, that is again in Google, have signed with Amazon. MI5, MI6, and, and, and the others have signed with, Google in, uh, with, the, with Amazon to cloudify some of their workloads. If security was not there, why would this organization even think about it? And I tell you what, if you have your workloads with the service providers, you are signing an SLA. You, you are taking those cloud providers illegible. You can take them to court. You can sue them if anything happens to your data. But if those data are actually within your organization, would you dare to sue your GM IT? 
I don't think so. You don't even have an SLA with your GMIT. You don't do, we don't do that. I was, a, I was on the other side. Uh, I had some GMITs. I don't have an SLA. I don't have a contract with the guys. But shifting your workloads to a cloud service provider, you're making our life harder. We love it. You have an SLA. We have a tough SLA. You have also uh, uh, contract terms that can take us to court if anything happens to your... So this is what we are saying. It's all about the contractual element, not the technology. Technology is there, on-prem or cloud, they're using the same technology. But the eligibility, the contractual eligibility around securing on cloud is much tougher, which makes you a little bit on rest from that perspective. So thanks for mentioning that, because I think this opens up the angle of, um, you know, to overcome this, there needs to be creativity. And the creativity is a little bit like what you suggested in terms of taking on the other uh, organizations uh, and kind of taking them on board and being a part of your uh, offering and so on and so forth. So I think that's, um, that's really interesting. Zain, so continuing on, I think what, we talked a lot about data and the data centers and the data aspect of it. On the services side, and, and really maybe one other topic we need to talk about is, you know, what are we enabling from a services from an AI point of view, from a machine learning point of view, from an advanced analytics point of view, and so on and so forth. So Abdelaziz started that discussion a little bit. What I would really like to understand a little bit more is how much of that is actually currently happening, uh, you know, and, and let's focus on Oman, or maybe we can expand it then to the GCC and the rest of the world. But, I mean, the intent is for having those clouds with all of that data is to do something with it and to do all of this beautiful uh, analysis on it to be able to come up with those insights. But is it really happening? So how much of, you know, how much analytics are happening on our data centers? How much uh, insights are being generated? So maybe... Uh, Uh, well, I think we have uh, started on a good um, on, on good terms. Uh, I think recently, specifically when it uh, when when the the COVID pandemic hit us, one of the most important aspects actually was data: number of people getting infected, number of people being hospitalized, number of people. All of these analytics, they were the most important things to us. Now. The impact that came after that as well, that all, all organizations, they started thinking, now we have to calculate our profits, our losses, how are we going to recover? And all of that is not possible without actually having your, your, your 360 degree view of, uh, of data. And if organizations, I mean, smaller organizations, they don't have that much of an issue. They can just put, put it, host it on the cloud, they can get it analyzed and everything. Without even buying their own analytics uh, solution. They can have it as a service, as a software, as a service from data center providers. Now, the bigger, the bigger challenge, uh, in my point of view, was, was for the government to actually look at the 360 degree impact, where I think uh, the ministry at the moment of uh, transportation, uh, telecommunication and information technology is doing a, uh, has actually in my opinion, has done a great initiative in moving forward in, in, in the cloud-first uh, initiative. So they can move everybody into one cloud or different clouds, but uh, more of a big cloud so that you can actually have a 360-degree view of your, your, your citizens, of your, if you want to call them customers, but they're actually your citizens. So can we talk about numbers in terms of, let's say, how much is happening, or can we even talk about maybe examples where the data was used and these kind of insights, whether not it's in the pandemic or otherwise? Not much, to be honest. We are still at very early stages in actually moving towards true big data analytics uh, in, in Oman. But uh, there are some organizations who have actually started, I believe the oil sector, oil and gas sector have started, the telecom sector had started, some of the organizations that require uh, interactions with, uh, with international markets, they have started. But we are still in, in 
I would say if I'm very optimistic, I would say we are in the range of 25% that actually realize the benefit of uh, analytics and, uh, and big data at the moment in this, uh, Great. In this market. Hafid, I, I felt like you wanted to say something uh, in that area. So maybe you can shed some light in terms of some of the analytics that are happening. And if they are currently happening predominantly on your on-prem sites or even on the cloud, and, and how do you think enabling that mm -hmm. takes place? Uh, I will talk in terms of oil and gas. And oil and gas companies, you know, uh, because they need to process huge amount of data to explore oil to drill the data. So drilling data and exploration data is a massive amount of data they need to process. So that is why oil companies are always the big customers in the region uh, when you talk about GCC. And that is why they have always been uh, looking for a, a nice uh, private cloud or public cloud platform. One point I want to highlight here is that most of the companies around the world, they are talking about geological boundaries of the data. And uh, for example, if you talk about Saudi Arabia, they are enforcing now international cloud providers like Amazon and Google to, to build their data center inside Saudi Arabia. Otherwise, they will not ship the services over there. So I don't know whether Oman has such sort of uh, national level policies or you guys have actually enforced the international service providers to bring their data centers inside. And then once it is between your geological boundaries, then you can enforce your national level policies on top of that data. So once that infrastructure is placed there, and it comes under your national rules and regulations, then probably all the oil, oil and gas companies, they can start, uh, and even uh, your private sector, they can start thinking of moving their critical data over there. And uh, I think it will address most of the security concerns we are talking about. Great, thanks for that. Uh, Mohammed, from your end, in terms of the construction industry or the banking industry, I mean, uh, where do you I, see that? I, I want to sort of address what you mentioned earlier about services, right? Yes. In, in, infrastructure is one hand. I think when, when we were looking at the survey er, earlier, I was a bit surprised to see that uh, there is a number of respondents who said that they're using, you know, hybrid approaches. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of this hybrid approach is actually uh, uh, SMEs or large corporations using software as, uh, as a service model across uh, across cloud providers from around the world. So that's one, one way of sort of taking some of your workload uh, online or on cloud. But the infrastructure piece, or uh, and I think uh, ODP mentioned it very well, uh, and rationalized costs uh, using broadband. I wish more of your sales representatives were as articulate as you are, but that, that, that's a conversation in itself. And, and th this, this remains uh, the part of ambiguity. And to, to have a lot of large corporations stop moving, look, we're sold on cloud. I'm, I'm barely touching 40. I, you know, I was on the internet in the 90s and I only know a world of the internet. So cloud is sold to us. But uh, I think Dr. Salem Rezeki mentioned earlier that sort of transformation uh, and being able to uh, uh, sort of create that roadmap of how do we move to these infrastructure service providers wireless they address the price point right that uh, that's that's the area of uh, of real work that conversation as opposed to okay G great now when we talk about services one way that i think has been emerging in the last maybe decade or at least the last 5 years in a bigger way is these microservices now how, where so, so I, I think maybe let's talk a little bit about microservices and, and what are microservices? How are they utilized? What, what doors do they open that otherwise were not open? And, you know, and, I, and I really open it to anybody who can talk and educate us a bit about it. So half of it, please go ahead. Yeah, as you guys mostly know that uh, the computing has evolved over the years. Uh, we moved from the bare metals to uh, virtualization and now uh, people are talking about containers and uh, dockers. So this is one of the area where uh, most of your application developers are looking at. Instead of deploying a complete virtual machine for your application, now you can just use a ready-to-deploy containers, which are a very small version of your operating system. You just have your specific libraries and you can just deploy it on a scale quite quickly. So one thing I want to highlight here is that the more you delay your cloud, the more complex the deployment will be. Because right now, you can catch up, you can still deploy a virtual machine. After 20 years, all the international providers, they will not provide virtual machine anymore. 
it will be all containers and dockers, microservices. So these microservices is relatively a diff difficult transition in terms of your uh, enterprise or your, your local companies. Um, uh, because microservices is not something very easy, you know. When you talk about the managing the infrastructure, managing your application, managing the security, is way difficult than any virtual machine or any bare metal. So the point I'm going to highlight is that microservice is, is a new concept which is coming in, and we guys need to adopt it as soon as possible. Because it is something very promising, you can scale your service, you can scale down uh, quite quickly, and you can uh, do wonders in terms of uh, putting your application on the cloud. So I think uh, this is uh, a key challenge for the, uh, the enterprises here in Oman, and uh, you guys need to catch up on this uh, you know, requirement as soon as possible. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, Sadak, I don't know if there are any questions from the, the audiences or, um, or on Zoom. So we'll open it up a little bit and we have a question up front here. Can we have a mic? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this uh, nice uh, conversation and uh, debates uh, in part of it. Uh, I'm Sultan Lihya, co-founder of uh, Code Academy. Uh, it's not a question, it's, uh, it's rather a comment uh, regarding the discussion without, uh, with regards to the pricing of uh, cloud. Uh, thank you, uh, Engineer Maqbul, for, for, for clarification, but I would address the point from two angles. Uh, the first angle today, we are on uh, a data conference. So let us base our discussion on data. So let us Google price, uh, cloud pricing compared Oman and international. Would be uh, for any client, would select uh, a cloud service in Oman? I would say no. This is the, the first point or the first angle. The second angle is the way you are trying to represent it is not a customer-centric uh, point of view. Those are customers. I'm a customer. We all customers saying your service is expensive. And you just say, no, no, I'm not expensive. Um, my service is uh, 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 affordable. This is not the way to talk to customers. Uh, sorry, I'm not, I don't mean it that way, but we are customers. So uh, from this point of view, you, uh, as a service provider, you need to take the point, address it, discuss it, and then explain it to the customer. But staying and saying, no, we are not, and all customers are saying, it's expensive, this is not the way to, to, to present it, sorry for that. Uh, last point is we need to build the whole ecosystem of cloud services. So you are providing the service. As a client, I need a connectivity to you. That connectivity is still expensive as well. So to have point to point connectivity from my data center to your cloud service, whether going to uh, any service provider, I would not name any, still that service is quite expensive to have reliable يعني, bandwidth and, and uh, يعني, to make my, 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 my daily uh, operation is smooth. So that's the point I would like to mention. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, I have a question. Um, Dr. Riyadh, you started by saying a very good two statements. You said without data, you just like another person with a new opinion. And then also you added one more point when you said that we have an ocean of data. But I'm a bit surprised to hear from Abdul Hakim that some of the organizations, when they host their data in the data centers, one of the main concern is that this data should not be shared. So the question is that, if this data is not to be shared and is already hosted there, where does Oman stand then in the 
world of the open data, data policy, and so how we can employ the artificial intelligence, machine learning, if the data are secured. Because the way they define the term secure means we should not share the data. Why, should we, why shouldn't we share data? Dr. Salim has, has been quoted a lot today, and I will quote him as well. He stated that by default, data should be open. However, we still here in Oman, people have a lot of concern about this. So that's a bit really surprising. So we'd like to hear from them. If I, as a, as like a researcher, if I approach one of these data center, will they be able to, to provide me the data? We just have seen like an experience, what is called the pandemic. A lot of researchers, they have struggled in obtaining the data. That's why we could not like uh, come up with solutions for the, for the pandemic. We waited all the solutions to become from abroad. We imported the solutions, although we have scientists in Oman. We have researchers in Oman. However, we don't have the platform for them to work in a professional manner. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting question. We had, I think, one more question in the back. So I think we'll take one. I'll bring it to you. Maybe. You maximum two more questions and then we'll come back to the panel so that we can also close within time, which is another 20 minutes. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullah. Malik al uh, I'm a startup company, Ta'ziz al uh, Unfortunately, I think I'm working with the, the three companies now. I'm, I'm, I'm giving hosts. Why, why unfortunately? Uh, <laughs> because I, I have a complaint Okay. <laughs> okay. Then, uh, okay. Uh, I wrote my, my, my notes in Arabic. Oh, I think I'll say it in Arabic better. Okay. Uh, here is a l l l statement or, or a comment, and it has an end question. يعني. Uh, what I understood, يعني, مثل ما ما فهمت من تعاملي مع مع ال ال الثلاث مزودين. إنه الإنفراستراكتشر وإنهم هم توهم بادين في السوق وإنهم they have shares مع مع الحكومة ومؤسسات أخرى مستثمرة معهم أو أفراد حتى من باب ال ال الحوكمة والاستدامة كنت أخذ دروس في المواضيع هذه I'm from an educational background not a businessman so اللي في بالي كان مثلا هل في مقارنات مع السوق الخليجية اللي جنبنا مثلا في الأسعار وفي ال وفي ال يعني وش هم يعطوا أوكي وكم أسعارهم هذا ممكن يساعدني أنا ك كبزنس بارتنر في إقناع الناس في السوق أن أن إنه this is what is happening يعني ما مش نحن في عمان فقط غاليين لكن كل الشركات اللي حوالينا في المحيط هنا مثلاً ممكن يبدو بهذا الطريقة في في تكملة بعد طيب هل في عندنا مثلا فرانشايز حال شركات كبيرة مثلا أسعارها جيدة مثلا والإنفراستراكشر مالهم جيد ممكن أنتوا تستثمروا فيهم ويجيوا في عمان وهذا ممكن يخفض أيضا التكاليف نوعا ما النقطة الأخيرة بس إذا كان نحن مثلا بنروح ناحية الحوكمة والاستدامة مع الوقت مثلا لو أخذنا خمس سنوات لحد ما تقنع كثير من المؤسسات الحكومية أو الخاصة في الانتقال إلى الكلاودز ويكون كوست افكتف بالنسبة لهم مع الوقت هل في دراسة الحين للسوق من ناحية كمنتو أيضا بالتعاون مع الحكومة أو الهيئة أو الوزارة اللي تشرف على أعمالكم أنه مثلا لو انتقل كذا نسبة من السوق خلال خمس سنوات ممكن أسعار الكلاود هوستنج تنخفض بنسبة كذا كذا هذا السؤال الغير واضح في النهاية شكرا كان في سؤال أخير هناك في خلف وراء مرحبا السلام عليكم معكم سعيد السلطي I see the main concern is the pricing issue here in Oman okay <laughs> we are hungry for data infrastructure. You know? From beginning, I'm agreeing with Mr. Mohammed Tamami and with others uh, as well. See, yes, I will give. Uh, I don't want to repeat the same what they have mentioned. Just I will give you real examples we have faced in the previous years. 
uh, actually, uh, they are actually government projects. We have finished the implementation for three government uh, projects for e-transformation, but actually we couldn't launch because of the hosting issue or hosting prices. So that, those ministries, they couldn't get that budget from Ministry of Finance to enable them to host their, uh, their new solutions in the hosting company because they don't want to host it in their own data center. So actually, uh, after uh, five or six years, those projects couldn't to go live. And what happened last year, uh, those ministries already merged with other ministries, so those projects dead. So money spent for nothing. I wish those money paid for me. I will invest them. Okay, this year, actually, I have my own business for, for the same sector in, I, uh, in IT sector as implementer. Till now, I couldn't do, uh, actually, for, uh, for my service as, um, uh, as implementer, there is no issue for my price. Okay, but the main issue I'm facing, we couldn't to conclude the project or to be awarded because of the hosting price is very high. And one of them, it is government entity, they said, because they are dealing with one of the service provide, one of the service providers. What they, actually, what is their cost is more than around 400% what they can pay if they will uh, uh, host it in their own data center, even if they want to scale up in the future. It's hundreds of thousands of money real. But if they are hosted in, uh, in their own data center, it will, it will not cost maximum 50,000 after scaling, imagine. So this is the problem. So please, can you uh, revisit your cost uh, structure, please? Because uh, just one point I want to mention, I think you want to, to reach the break even from the next year you are starting or or something like that. No, it's not like this, please, because we, most of us, we are here, we are working in business, okay? So please uh, make your investment after five to 10 years to, br to reach the break even. And if you want to scale, or you, if you want to have more market share, or if you want the government entities to shift to, uh, to, uh, to your data centers in the coming years to achieve the digital transformation vision. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the questions. I, I think we got four questions. Uh, three, of, three of them were price related, and one of them is a very important question, I think, on data accessibility. Now, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll open the discussion and responses, but I really want to also mention it in the sense that let's also talk about key enablers for you to be able to do what you've been asked to do, because I think there are you know, you also operate as an entity, you have your shareholders you're responsible to report to and so on and so forth. But I think this is an area where potentially the government or other entities can support large organizations like the PDOs, like the Bank Muscats, like, you know, can, can support in the longer vision. Um, and so I, I really want to open it up to, uh, you know, Maqbool and Abdul Hakim and Asad to come back and maybe Asad, you, you can start with that since you've been. Malish, I'll give you the harder questions, but so, so there was another question that was raised and we'll come back to it because I think it is an important question, but let's spend maybe 10 minutes on, on the pricing question and then come back to this last question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Riyadh, and thank you for uh, people for their question and concern which is actually, uh, we always uh, take into consideration that part. Every time uh, we are getting the same comment that the prices is uh, uh, too high comparing to whatever option that's available in the market. Uh, I believe uh, to a certain level that is right. Uh, we are not denying this. When you are comparing us with the global players who are working on quantity, for sure we cannot compete with them. Those organizations are exist since a while in the market. We are just, uh, uh, for example, data to cloud is five years. Uh, the other players, I think, they are older than us. But again, we have taken into consideration as well uh, the value that we are giving to the customer. Today, uh, the global players, when it comes to the government entities and big uh, organizations, they are hosting all those, those services outside Oman. 
uh, few of them they are having alliances with the, the service provider here, but majority of them they are not providing that uh, feature to the end customer who is looking for it. Uh, service provider, uh, credited service provider is giving this. This is one. Second, and this is a very important, and I will uh, I brought an, a real example that we had it with one of uh, our clients. The comparison when they are building the, we call it as a business case, uh, on-prem solution that they have it, and uh, the cloud uh, solution. They are not taking into consideration all factors. They are just considering the hardware investment that they will going to throw it to upscale whatever data center that they have it, and they compare it with the full set of solution that you are providing. Uh, to a certain level, that's not right. And that's why we start uh, educating our customer that you, you should have a fair comparison. Then you can say that the price is, is expensive or no. Uh, and I believe uh, me and Abdul Hakim and the representative from ODP, we had this meeting with the MTCIT. And uh, we are planning to take that initiative uh, way forward with the Ministry of uh, Finance and the other entities just to make sure that we are participate in educating the decision maker uh, because we believe that is an obstacle. Uh, the other part, when it comes to the SME, uh, there are different flavors provided by uh, cloud service provider. Uh, that is more or less you can uh, compare it with the global players. Uh, trust me, sometimes yeah, and global players, they, they give you the top line, high level, but when you calculate the full solution itself, it is more or less at the same level that the local provider is uh, providing. Yeah, and this is reality. One, one other part, I'm sorry, I wanted to jump to the point that uh, Dr. Jamil Shakhsi highlight, accessibility. I believe uh, this is more or less related to the regulatory itself. We as a provider, we are willing to provide this, but at the end we are not owning the data of that entities. That's why we cannot give an access to everybody. But if the regulatory guide everybody that those data should be accessible by, uh, I mean, um, for, for, for studies, for research or whatever, we are willing to provide this. We don't have any, any issue from our side. But again, it is not within our control. Yani, uh, there is a rule that we need to implement it as well, and we have to make sure that it's implemented. Otherwise, uh, yani we might be out of business, to be honest. Yeah. So that's uh, the comment from my side. Uh, yeah. Shukran, Asad. I, th I think you mentioned the word about education. And I think education, yes, needs to be applied to the customer so that they do the right comparison. But I think education also need, need to be applied on us. I mean, and, and let me be very frank and transparent. In Oman, we subsidize and even, you know, more than subsidize, for example, Oman Air. As a country, we do that. Why? Because we have an overall arching uh, strategy to attract people to conferences, to visit Oman for tourism. And so as a result, while that line item could become a loss, but in the grand scheme of things, it is providing that input. I think if we are in Oman, serious about moving the direction we're taking to 2040, the government and the providers need to be sitting together. And this is why I mentioned education, because I think it is your role as the providers to educate you know, your bosses, really, and the decision makers to say, guys, you need to allow us to drop costs and, you know, and, and impact your bottom line in a negative way so that we enable these other things to happen. So the, rather than our Omani customers telling us AWS or another data pro provider is cheaper, says you bring in the customers from the Emirates and Saudi and other places so that we compensate for that. And that's an education that we need to do and the data center providers and this whole sector needs to do upwards to be able to take that forward. And to me, that's an important step we need to take going forward. I'll allow Abdel Hakim and Maqbul to come back and then the last five minutes, which I think we now have about 10 minutes. So if we can wrap up in five minutes, because I would like to come back and then talk about the future very quickly and what you think going forward is. Please. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me talk about the price and uh, what we have done in terms of the comparison, maybe the question raised by Malik. 
uh, when we compare between our neighborhood, uh, let's say UAE, what they, their strategy it was really strong, uh, and uh, Saudi Arabia, they are now somehow, you know, it's not following, but they are trying to take the, the same way. So they approached Microsoft, they approached Google, they approached Alibaba, Alibaba friend is here. So uh, they approached them to come uh, to the country, you know, and try to invest from their side as well. So try to, to give them a bigger project, you know, one of the digital transformation project or uh, one of the huge projects that utilize or justify their investment in the country. As soon as they start this on the country itself, they start to bring the latest technology to the, to the customer or other customer on the country. And this is the way they are doing right now. From our perspective, you know, as a data mount, we are recently collaborate with Alibaba uh, uh, Cloud, and uh, we have a long term, I mean, the short term investment or, or a plan to invest together in bringing the public cloud or bringing the latest technology of Alibaba here. And we already start promoting Alibaba Cloud uh, to the customer. And I would like to thank here also Alibaba team is already, uh, Mohammed Ali is here. Maybe you can stand up, Ali. <laughs> Mohammed Ali is from Alibaba Cloud and uh, he's representing Alibaba Cloud since two months is here right now. And he's working with, along with our team and the customer as well to address you know, uh, the needs uh, of, the, of, of the platforms and the application and the latest technology that they require. Plus, we address the pricing as well. So this is one of the initiatives that we are already started, and I think everyone has to start in a, you know, this initiative to bring the international uh, player to Oman market, you know, by giving them an incentive in terms of the size of the market, the size of the you know, uh, neighborhood, even market, that we can, uh, as a Oman, we can approach them. Uh, Thank you, Al Hagim. I think, Engineer Mahmoud, maybe we, we start moving into the future looking, but I, w I would like to really bring it in to connect to the previous point as well. And to kind of, if, if I'm being very blunt and I listened, you know, what you are proposing are evolutionary steps, and these guys are looking for a revolution because it's not good enough. So, looking into the future and going forward, whether it's from a regulation point of view, or in your mind how the future of data centers and utilization of data centers for analytics and enabling that going forward. What are your views on how things will happen in the next, let's say, 10 to five years? Thank you, thank you. It's always good to talk about the future, I think there is a slide maybe. But people will hold you to it. Vendra, if you can yeah, highlight it. But before my final slide, I owe, I owe you a response. Uh, first of all, I don't know from where I got the impression that we have been defensive. We are not defensive. It was a mess. We are not defensive. 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 We are providing at least 600 uh, corporates in Oman. All the banks are there and, and other utilities, oil and gas, and we've been scrutinizing our pricing uh, all the way through the 10 years. And we will continue doing it. We are not defensive. We listen to you, we hear you. Like in how business works, you are a businessman. You, there is a cost on top of cost. There are people who are working, there are salaries you have to pay, and so on and so forth. Like in, that is not a defensive way of saying that we are not expensive. We might be expensive, and we will promise you that we will look into this with the team, Saeed to Hassan Mujuddin, uh, and we will scrutinize it even further. But there is an exercise we've done uh, a couple of weeks ago. The team have done, actually. Uh, we had uh, uh, benchmarked the price with international players, Mithil, Amazon, Google, uh, Azure, International, and I think there is another one. And we found that we are not really far away from there. In some cases, we are the same. In some cases, we are a little bit more, three, four percent more, or five sometime, Yani. We can show you this. If you can visit uh, us uh, for a coffee, I can bring this all to you in a presentation. They need we owe you an explanation, and we owe you uh, basically uh, a presentation 
of where we are. Maybe we can even have your input uh, to scrutinize it further. But we've done a lot of exercises, and we will even do more, inshallah. And, and the security aspect that we are also having in our infrastructure, maybe it's not there in the international. When you uh, host internationally, that security layer may be not there in some cases. And that's why you see the, 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 the prices are lower. In our cases, we take it by default. We will not host anything unless it is secure, even if you don't want to pay for it, because that is, there is a, a branding implication. And so we took, it, took, yani, we took the chances here, yani, and SLA and so on and so forth. So that is one. Going back to your question, yes. sir, I don't want to take much time. Uh, basically, the future is, uh, as we can see, there is um, a digital economy in front of us. Uh, for us to reach there, we have to utilize the fourth industrial revolution components. And that is cloud. That's what, the, the cloud is the first journey towards anything else like IoT, like AI, like, uh, like big data, can only be, this is from my perspective, you might challenge me, you might, uh, yani, don't feel that, you know, uh, I, I believe on that. Uh, yani, I'm sorry, if, and I'm willing to listen also if anybody has a different, a different kind of uh, philosophy. But cloud to me is the first step towards other fourth industrial revolution components like IoT, like big data, like, like others. And then those will be as an enablers to the diversified economical uh, pillars of Oman like logistics, fisheries, tourism, mining, and others. If we utilize those components to enable the diversified uh, elements of this economy, then that is where we can reach to what we call digital uh, economy in the future. Where we are right now in Oman, I think cloud is there. Uh, maybe we need to push more, but I think there is a lot of uh, things that has, been th that has to be done in the big data, open, open, dig open big data, I would call it, and AI and IoT, and that is where we are actually gearing up the good news is that those four components will enrich the SME market. Then it doesn't have to be the big players. There are also chances that all the SMEs can participate and can make money out of these uh, fourth industrial revolution components. Today we have what we call uh, FinTech. Yes. So there is already two or three FinTech solutions developed or basically managed. Those companies are managed by Omanis and, uh, you know, they, they are there already in the market. Absolutely. And we're going to see them growing. And we are here, uh, we will be supporting them. We are, we are actually signing agreements with them in order to empower them even further. Excellent. So talking about fintechs, I think Mohammed, uh, you know, will be the obvious person to talk to now about fintechs and maybe, but talking in the context of fintechs and the future, whether it is specifically on fintechs or going beyond fintech into uh, banking or even in construction, what I'm going to ask every person in a minute or two just to talk about what do you see happening in the future in the next two to five years in this area? I think uh, financial technologies of finance is a, uh, is, a is a major benefactor of open data. But that's responsible open data, right? Because if we talk about open data generically, you know, some people don't want to share their data and that's their right, right? So that's fine, that's okay. But then there is a lot of segments in the population globally and locally that can benefit when uh, uh, data is facilitated to move around to create meaningful, useful information that can help a lot of, uh, uh, be it SMEs or individuals uh, out there. I mean, you look at, uh, if you just look at something as simple as credit scoring uh, in banking, it's, uh, these are models that were you know, conceived in the 1950s. They don't represent the reality of uh, of individuals today, and that actually for the banks, there's a lot of money left on the table. I don't know why they don't want to pick it up by just uh, perceiving individuals slightly differently by using uh, their options out there relative to data. So open data is uh, going to be a huge driver for uh, financial services uh, over the next decade in Oman and around the globe. And that's uh, definitely something I'm excited about. And uh, just on the yep. providers, I just want to say, we recognize that us customers are also very annoying. 
<laughs> uh, we recognize that. So we'll try to be better. Thank you. Great. Half of maybe from the oil and gas point of view, where do you see things going in the next two to five years? Uh, cloud is definitely coming in the next five, ten years in all the companies. Uh, oil companies are already on the track. So cloud is uh, not something we can deny. Uh, the only thing which we need right now is the will. And uh, the will can be from the top level. I think it's a top-down approach. Um, and the, and the cloud, uh, because most of you guys right now understand cloud is good, but it's a mindset. So it needs a push from the top to down. It can be from the national level. When you talk about oil and gas company, you know, our management at the top level, they fully understand this. And they have already, um, uh, we can say in Aramco, we have announced the data emergency that we need to make sure that we, we, we follow the, uh, the cloud as soon as possible. We are working on this. So I don't think so. We can stay away from this uh, quite a bit uh, in future. So it is coming. Great. Thank you. Uh, Asad, maybe back to the discussion of revolution versus evolution when it comes to data center pro provisions, both in terms of services as well as prices. Any thoughts on that in the next two to five years? Well, uh, I believe that is already part of uh, the things that we have at the table for discussion and to agree way forward. When it comes to the future, I see it here in Oman, I believe uh, cloud is happening and uh, I think the market is way, uh, moving to the right track uh, to make sure that they are getting benefit out of such solution in, uh, in their business. And one other thing that I wanted to highlight here is uh, I trust uh, Companies should focus on their core business way forward. There is a lot of investment done when it comes to IT, which is not a core business for majority of the companies. Let uh, give us that we will get to handle it for you guys, and you can focus on the core business. That for sure will get to help you to go for uh, to grow. When it comes to the prices, uh, I believe uh, this is something will be driven by the market, and. Uh, we have seen it in, in telecom. I came from telecom background, and we have seen it. It was driven by the market and the prices comparing to what we used to charge the customer before it's dropping, and the, the price erosion is happening. So even for a cloud service, uh, this is happening, and it will, and you as a customer will get to see that for sure in the, in the coming years, inshallah. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Abdul Aziz, you should be the most excited of us all, I think. Uh, well, and me. <laughs> yes, but, very uh, much. From a services uh, analytics point of view. Very so. much. But if I may just put a, a, a different hat at the moment, uh, not defending the cloud service providers, I believe the whole cloud ecosystem needs some support. And I've seen this support does exist and it's coming up, which will reduce prices. Um, being part of initially the ICT labs, uh, part of Tenfeed, there are quite a lot of initiatives that are coming up to support the, the technology um, the technology ecosystem here in Oman in general. And I believe these are coming up soon. And, and if then they don't reduce their prices, we can attack them more and more. But I believe the, the government is also supporting quite a lot of uh, areas because at the end of the day, what, 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 what drives the price? I mean, forget the price of storage, forget the price of uh, uh, cooling. You have basics, land, electricity, and all of that is available. It just has to be enabled a bit more and supported more. With, and I believe that is, that is uh, coming. Thank you so much, Abdul Aziz. Abdul Hakim, the last insight is from you. Yeah. So, please. so I think in the next five years, the data center will be one of the main utility in Oman, like a water, electricity, and the telecom. So every, you know, every customer, uh, either uh, uh, is a government or the private sector, they will request along with the utility, the, the cloud service, Second part from the customer perspective, I think it is two world service than product. So customer will ask about the performance. They will not ask about the product that you have, what kind of performance that you can provide. This is what I, what I feel in the next three to five years it will happen. Fantastic. Um, well, we've reached the end. So I think on behalf of all of you, I would like to uh, thank the entire panel it's been a very lively discussion, very debates-related uh, discussion. I hope you gained value from it as well as enjoyed it. One thing to observe is that while we have about 20% of the audience are, uh, you know, ladies and the free, maybe even more, more like 30%, the panel itself is actually 100% male. So that diversification is also missing, and I think it will be coming. 
to me, that is the prediction from the future. So thank you very much uh, and enjoy the rest of your work. Thank you. Thank you, Abdul Rahim.